No. Calling your phone. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Dominique Baptiste, and welcome to Biblical Essentials. We are here in the daytime. I know that is strange for you as well as it is strange for me. Praise God. Just got to do a little housekeeping real quick. Amen. So I do hope that everybody can hear me. One second. I'm calling it, babe. It's not ringing. It's... All righty then. <laughs> Amen. For all you married people, you do understand that we do. When people call, you just must seem to answer. Amen. Well, praise God. I want to thank you all for joining today. I just want to check and see a few things. We want to give people a little time to join us. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. I'm not able to see everyone as I would love to do, but, um, you know, God's going to send everything we need, right? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, God. All right, so... We're in the holiday season, so I want to say Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holy days, as far as I'm concerned, to everyone. Amen. We're talking about expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. I tell you, the fact that we're on today is a miracle. <laughs> Bless the Lord. The fact that we're able to stream live today, amen, on, on a couple of these networks, is an absolute miracle. We had... Um, no connectivity whatsoever on the previous day, but today we do. So since today we do, we're going to give God thanks for that and um, just be thankful. Amen. Just be thankful. So if you are watching, if you are connected, then if you will, if you're watching on our mobile app, then I need you to text in the bottom, put them in, but just put in a note on Ustream because the mobile app streams from Ustream, that you're watching on the mobile app. See, as, as we have advanced technology, they don't tell me how many people are watching anymore. So I can't see it on my, on my camera screen here. But if you're watching on Ustream, then go ahead and let me know that. I'm also going to go ahead and pull up Periscope over here to make sure that all of our Twitter followers and Periscope followers are connected as we are building our network as we're building our community. Amen. Woo! Say, <laughs> yes, yes. This is all new and it's not new to me, but it's, it's different for right now. I'll say that. Um, what does this expect a miracle? Praise God. A miracle. M I R A C L E. Amen. Now we're going to say we want to go live on Twitter as well. And give ourselves, okay, we got rotation. Praise Him. We're clicking go live. Oh, beautiful. Now I got to get it to switch over to me. There we go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at that. I got three cameras sitting up here. Bless God. 
All right. Three. I can't move that one because if I move it, it's surely falling off. All right. So praise the Lord, you stream. Yeah, we, we've been together a long time, haven't we? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, Facebook. Praise the Lord, you're growing and being blessed. And then praise the Lord, you stream and Twitter. Amen. Praise God. How wonderful. And we'll just have to copy over to YouTube. Amen. Unless we can get another camera right there. And then it, it, this will just be crazy, y'all. <laughs> Praise God, praise God, praise God. So, let's get started today. This program, we actually, is only 30 minutes. Um, don't take up much of your time. But I do want us to just hop in the Word. Amen. Get Let the Lord speak to you through this Word. Praise God. And then we kind of move on. Amen. With the rest of your day. Praise God. I want you to know that we love you, appreciate you here at Biblical ETV. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we, we appreciate you here at Biblical ETV. We're so thankful to God for every good and perfect gift that he provides for us. Um, thank you all on every network. I cannot see your notes or comments, but I will note and comment after the program. If I do find that you are on this one certain <laughs> um, platform and you use inappropriate um, language, you will be blocked. Praise God, and we'll just put your name on the prayer list. So then the Holy Ghost will begin to chase you, amen, in an effort to arrest your heart so that you can follow God. Amen. Amen. So we, we've actually seen and, and, and had testimony of a young man that used to come and leave inappropriate language on one of our um, message boards very, very early. Y'all, we want AOL. You know that's early, right? <laughs> you know that's early. So we were on AOL, and he used to leave inappropriate messages. You know, it's nice to be flattered, but come on, at some point in time, you're going way too far. And um, he texted us. He texted me back, maybe five years later, and said, "You know, I want to apologize. You know, I'm saved now. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and I do have come to learn that you were really teaching good Bible." <laughs> so that's a blessing. Praise God. Are you expecting a miracle? Amen. You know, so many people say, you know, oh, I'm expecting a miracle. I just don't seem to have any. And I encourage you to take a look at what a miracle is. You know, miracles are what I call, this is my own definition, divine acts that are beyond human intervention or ability. That is a miracle. Amen. We talked yesterday and we shared kind of some of the miracles that we've seen as a part of the ministry. We've seen miracles where individuals were expect were um, had been diagnosed that they could not have children, could not have no eggs, could not. One one of the fallopian tubes was already missing, done, and she has a baby now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. You know, people with no swimmers have children now. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, and, um, you know, that they fathered children. Uh-oh. Amen. Whoo. All right. And so they fathered children. A, a sister who, you know, had had a stroke that we weren't even aware that she was paralyzed on one side, prayed for her for something else. Amen. God granted that miracle. <laughs> Amen. And then he turned around and graced her with healing. You know, while she's sitting there believing for her son to get saved, to come out of the gangs, and he is saved and out of the gangs, praise the Lord. Amen. God gave her an unrequested miracle, which was he healed the side of her body where she had been impacted by a stroke. Amen. And gave her mobility back in her left arm. Amen. And on the left upper part of her body. That was a miracle. Amen. This morning we woke up. That's a part of God's natural gifting. Amen. But if you woke up this morning and you're in the hospital or you're somewhere and you were already not determined not to live and something that you were diagnosed not to live and that, you know, maybe you didn't, you weren't here for a few minutes, a couple hours. It's been known. It has happened. Amen. And that is a miracle. So we're asking God for miracles. We're asking God for um, blessings. And not only that, to open our eyes to the miracles and blessings that he pours into our life. Praise God. Amen. Welcome on Periscope. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on Periscope and on Twitter. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And then to all of those that are watching us on Ustream, welcome. Amen. And Facebook, praise him. <laughs> praise God. All right. So today let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 
9 and verse 6. And it says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, that's my favorite expectation scripture um, when it comes to the Messiah. There are many, many scriptures, and we pulled out 40 of those on yesterday. I'm sorry about this shaking, y'all. And um, we pulled out 40 of them on yesterday that talk about the coming Messiah. They share about how the Lord is coming and what he is going to do when he arrives. Amen. He's going to how he's going to be born of a virgin. Amen. He's going to bring life. Praise God. He's going to bring eternal life. Amen. He's going to bring liberty to the Jews. There's so much in these, in these 40 um, specific scriptures that we specifically found. How the Messiah, he would be a willing sacrifice. Praise God. How can I move this without putting my hand in front of that? Okay. Um, that he would be born of the seed of the woman. Hmm. All right, God. <laughs> Amen. He would be the Passover lamb. And so much so, the children of Israel were always expecting the Messiah. And, you know, when there's expectation, amen, then we tend to, we wait. We're not waiting patiently. We're expecting it to come and to come now and to come quickly. Praise God. So as they were expecting Jesus to come, to come now and to come quickly, he did. Here is the manifestation of that miracle, of that miracle. Amen. The expectation fulfilled right here. Let's go over to Luke. And in the scripture in Luke, it says this, it says, now they, they were expecting the Messiah and the Messiah, the Messiah comes. Here is the fulfillment of that, um, expectation. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city called Galilee named in Galilee, um, named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed of a man who was, whose name was Joseph in the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So here we see a multiple miracle. One, we see the fulfillment of a prophetic word that the Messiah is coming. Now the Messiah, the time for, for impregnating with the Messiah is here. To bring his seed to the earth is here right at this point in time. Amen. Then on top of that, the Lord is like, let me, let me just throw some, some, some good, good up in here for you. Now she's not going to be, he's not going to be born the natural way. One, well, first he's not going to fall out of heaven. He's got to come into the earth, be born into the earth. Amen. So the scripture says in Genesis, he's going to be born of the seed of the woman, which means he's going to be born of a woman's egg. Amen. He's going to be not fertilized with the sperm of a man, but fertilized with the glory of God. Because we're going to read here how the scripture overcome, overshadows Mary and she actually gives birth. But the key thing here, one, fulfillment of a promise. He, she is... He is to be born of the seed of the woman. Amen. And the next thing is she's a virgin. Boom. That's a miracle. It's called immaculate conception. <laughs> it's only happened once. Amen. Now I've heard of, you know, the people say, oh, it's happened before. A, a woman with no, you know, no sperm gives, is, gets pregnant, but that child is not viable. What they don't, what the thing is, the egg can begin to split because of a number of reasons all by itself. But the child is not viable. There is no life in those beings. So they end up having to do an abortion. Amen. Later, because the child has no sperm, there was no sperm there. There's a whole half of those chromosomes are not there. In this case, Jesus was whole. So let's now we see two miracles. So we see the promise coming. The Messiah is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. When Messiah comes, he will. When Messiah comes, he will. Well, now Messiah is coming. Amen. So here's what that expectation has brought to life. A virgin woman who's visited by an angel and who's told this. It says, and having come in, the angel said unto her, born of a one. Okay. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said unto her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings and considered that manner of greeting, considered what manner of greeting is this? 
It says, And the angel said unto her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you are found, you have found the favor of God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord will be with and the Lord will give him the throne of his father, David. Right. So now here is Mary. OK, let, let's just I'll keep reading to down to the Immaculate Conception. Um, this is Luke chapter one, verse 26 through whenever I finish reading. OK, and it says, and Mary said unto him, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Spirit is will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. It says, And now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son in her old age and is now in her sixth month, for her womb was called barren. For God, with, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the hand, sir, the hand, the hand, I'm sorry, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now, of course, obviously, this, what, she, what he said happened. Interestingly enough, I love this. Now, take a look at this. This is one thing that God revealed to me out of this. Do you notice that Elizabeth got pregnant first? Now, why would they need for Elizabeth to get pregnant first? There was another promise that was sent. And that promise was, one shall come before him, crying, prepare ye the way of the wilderness. Who is that one? That's John the Baptist. So in our expectation, we're expecting what Elijah to come. Amen. Or one in the spirit of Elijah to come and to prophesy and to proclaim that Jesus, that the son of, that the Messiah is here. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is on his way. He's coming. He's here. And then to announce when he's here, right? That's what they were expecting from Messiah. Why? Because scripture told them to expect that. They were expecting a miracle. They were expecting God to do something mighty and awesome. And so we see the mighty and awesome right here in Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38. And I just encourage you to read the whole thing. It's a beautiful chapter. Amen. Amen. So in learning that and in, in looking at what was happening with Luke as well as in um, with Mary, now he's told her about Elizabeth. He could have not told her about Elizabeth. Could have not. Didn't have to. But he did tell her about Elizabeth. And he told her before he got her response. See, there are times when God, we've asked God for a miracle. We pray for that miracle. But what needs to happen? We need our faith to be built up. The building of Mary's faith was the testimony of Elizabeth. When Mary heard that Elizabeth, who is old, who was barren, who the whole family, now she's a cousin, so you know cousins, we know the business, right? And so this family has now, oh, Elizabeth will never have kids. They're never having children. It's just kind of been accepted along the way. She's too old to have a child. She and Zachariah, she and her husband have dedicated their lives to um, the service of the ministry. You know, they're, we're just going to serve in the temple. Amen. He's cleaning the temple. She's helping with the ladies. This is just what we're going to do. Amen. They, you know, and that's how they show their gratitude to the Lord. We're secretly deep in, deep in their hearts. They still wanted a baby. So then God, boom, blesses them, miracle, in their old age with the child that they prayed for all of their youth. All of those viable years, those 30, 40 viable years that a woman sees. And during that time, it may have been longer. But, you know, in our ages, you know, from 20, I, well, you know, you're viable before 20, but who's getting married before 20? You know, um, so I would say maybe then the 50 viable years that they had to work with. Um, but, you know, from maybe 13 or 14 to 60, 55, 50-ish, 60s. 
And, you know, those are the viable years, you know, when women are still able to have children. And so those years are over for them. They're over. So now here is God's opportunity to do a few things. One, fulfill a promise. He told them that the spirit of Elijah, that Elijah will come and he will announce that the Messiah is coming. Amen. And then he will also announce when the Messiah is here. He told them that. Then he turns around and fulfills that purpose, fulfills that promise. And when that promise is fulfilled in Elizabeth, this is now faith food for Mary. So when Gabriel comes and he announces to Mary, you have found favor with God. The blessing of God is upon you. You have been set aside to fulfill yet another promise. The promise is that the, um, the Messiah would come of the seed of a woman. Now you're here and there is need for, there is yet another promise fulfilled. Another miracle that was expected is now being fulfilled in Mary. And to show you that this is God, amen, I see you guys coming in. I just, I've turned off all the notes so that I can focus really on the message. So if I don't see you, if I don't say hi, I'm saying hi now. Hello, welcome, hello, welcome, hello, and welcome. Praise God. (laughs) Amen. Love you guys. Love you and appreciate you. Amen. Appreciate all the encouragement and everything. And, um, but now God is listening. He's listening. He wants to give each and every one of you a miracle, just like he did here for the children, for the Jews. God is no respecter of person. See, he is a keeper of his word. He said in Genesis that the Messiah would come of the seed of the woman. And then he shows us in Luke thousands of years later, you know, hundreds of years later, hundreds of years later, even over a thousand years, actually years later, now here is Messiah. Here he's coming. Mary, you've been found um, blessed of blessed of God. Amen. You're chosen of God. You're favored of God. So now Mary, boom. And then he says, and just up, just when you don't think it's not impossible, your cousin, your cousin Elizabeth, the old one up at the church. Yeah. Well, she and Zechariah working up there because they ain't got no kids at home. Yep, them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they are, she's now expecting a child. She's six months pregnant. So Mary thinks if it can happen for her and she's old like that, then it can happen for me. Amen. If this is what God is doing, he's making babies like out of nowhere. Amen. I receive that. So be it. The handmaiden of the Lord. I receive that. We don't know if Mary had gotten a diagnosis indirect um, from a, during the time that she may never have children. We don't know. We don't know if it ran in her family that you have one child and that's kind of it. Amen. We don't know about Jesus's uncles or aunts or, or even if he had any on that side of the family. We don't know. So we don't know why Mary was so eager to say yes after she heard Elizabeth's testimony. She heard that God had given Elizabeth a miracle and God can give it to her. He can give it to me. Same thing for you. Miracle. You need a miracle. Amen. Jesus, God, the angel went, God went all the way back to Genesis to fulfill a miracle in the New Testament in Mary. He went all the way back to the seed of the woman shall now you know, the Messiah comes of the seed of the woman. Now I know that people of scholars of the day had to be thinking, well, who's going to be the father? How's she going to have a child? You know, but now God comes along and he's increased Mary's faith. He's told her what's going to happen. So she won't be looking for nothing mystical and spooky. Amen. Nobody else can come along and say, you know, this is the baby that the father sent. (laughs) No, there's no changing. There's no mixing up. It's very, very clear here what's going to happen. He says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. And it, trying to make this table not shake. Um, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you and the power of his highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One that is born shall be called the Son of God. So just so you understand how this is going to happen, Mary, this is what's going to happen. God blessed your cousin with a baby and this is how she got it. So except the father was Zachariah. (laughs) Amen. So in this case, the father will overshadow you 
and you will give birth to the baby and he will be called the son of God. There's no man involved. So there's no sin involved. Amen. It's a fulfillment of purpose and prophecy according to the word. You add that miracle was, was announced that it was coming. Amen. God put so many pieces together. Amen. To all of these announcements about Messiah coming of a virgin, Messiah coming of the seed of a woman, Messiah coming to take away the sins of the world, Messiah coming. And then the beautiful thing is this, is the father names the baby. And so since the father's naming the baby, just so you know, don't come, don't start trying to go name hunting. There are no books. <laughs> don't do that. Don't ask who was cousin so-and-so and what was his name. He had such a good job. He's making a good, good, good reflection on the family. None of that. What he did, he told him, he says, and that he shall be called Jesus. Amen. He told him, he told him his name. And he says, he shall be called Jesus. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. I encourage you tonight to think about what you need from God. I encourage you today in daytime, boom, to think about the things that you need from God. Think about the things that you're looking for, that you're expecting from God. God took a mere took time from Genesis, amen, all the way down the annals of time and fulfill that promise in Mary. Thousands of years later, he did that. So this God can do the same thing for you. When he makes a promise, he does not forget. Amen. We looked at 40 script, the 40 scriptures yesterday that speak to the coming Messiah. He's going to be a willing sacrifice. Well, we didn't see that part yet. But we do know that according to this, um, the timeline in which we were working with, we saw Messiah coming. We saw him announced. We heard him announced. We heard the announcement. We see that he is going to be born of a virgin. We see that um, he is of the seed of the woman. Amen. He is the descendant of Abraham through whom all nations shall be blessed. He's in the bloodline. Joseph from the seed of David. Amen. From the family of David. Um, and Mary from the family of Abram. And so it's just all ties together. Amen. When you do their lineage, you find out which families they come from. Amen. So we see that all of this is now coming to pass. It is now being fulfilled. The scriptures about Messiah in this one instance, God can, whatever your expectation is, whatever your belief is, whatever your desires are, whatever you believe that God has promised you over the years, I want you to go back and get those promises. Amen. This is the season to see your promises, your expectations, your miracles come to pass. God has it for you. He has it in you. Praise the Lord. And it's for yours for right now. This is your season because you wouldn't hear this message if it wasn't. So you're here by design. You're not here by accident. You're here by design. You're here on purpose. Amen. Specifically because God has a miracle blessing in your life that he's promised you that he's ready to fulfill. Amen. It's the season of miracles. Well, listen, guys, love you. We'll be here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Praise the Lord. And um, we'll, um, we'll talk more about expecting a miracle at that point in time. God bless you. And remember, in this little piece of scripture, we see he sent us you know, I'm going to read Isaiah every, every single time there's something we're going to wrap up with that. But, um, he sent us, he gave us, he, he, he brought a son, the son of God. He gave us a child, amen. And that child shall have great responsibility and great power. We'll talk about all that as this message continues. Expect a miracle. I'm Dominique Baptiste and you're watching Biblical Essentials.